Well, for me to have the chance to introduce our final speaker of the day, uh, Hechan uh, Veziroglu. She is currently a PhD candidate in politics and international relations at Boghazi University, Istanbul, and has obtained her master in politics from Rutgers University. She's a freelance writer and a journalist, working for Hurriyet Daily News, Economic Review, Politics Online, and many, many more. In 2005, Hechan Verizlugu gained a praise from the EU Commissioner Oli Rehn for promoting a positive image of Turkey abroad. She has also been a former advisor and protocol assistant to the President of Turkey. The topic of her paper is EU and Turkish communication strategies, the media, the media. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very warm welcome for Hechan Vezeroglu. Thank you. I'm indeed very happy to be here, and uh, I would like to really uh, thank uh, the organizers of this uh, conference. Um, I have been to many other events in the past, but this is very special for me, especially with this distinguished guest. And it was very amazing for me to hear such very stimulating presentations from all of you. So thank you. Um, the media coverage has many dimensions, you know, multi-dimensional impacts, like cultural, political, social, psychological. But, uh, you know, we have a cultural mindset, the Turkish cultural mindset versus the cultural mindset of European people. So uh, I also would like to recommend you the Susan Stern's book about the uh, German ways. Uh, in which she talks about the uh, soft way of the mind. Uh, the, 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 one of the Danish gentlemen, I think, uh, has talked about it, the soft way of the mind. Uh, unless we change uh, soft way of the mind, we will not be able to have some sort of um, very efficient and sufficient communication um, strategies in the future, you see. But it's an essential tool, uh, communication, for all segments of the society. As you know, you should have uh, very good communication skills, even with your partner, you know. Otherwise, you can't uh, communicate effectively. That happens with the states, with the countries, you know. We should know each other's uh, habits, uh, behaviors, uh, behavior patterns, you know. Uh, so how do Turks and Europeans communicate? Misunderstanding uh, understandings can result when journalists and reporters cannot analyze the different aspects of Turkish and European communities, you know. Uh, so what sort of a dialogue do we need? We need language training, cultural differences uh, to, um, you know, to um, have a common denominator, intercultural dialogue. Uh, we need a new definition of cultural diplomacy uh, in the region, especially in the Middle East and in the Arabic states, because this region has a specific significance, as we all know, but we need a new definition, maybe also, on the other hand, a new moment for Europe, for the European mindsets, so that we find uh, common denominators, but we should also find ways to uh, cope with our differences. That's how we become strong, you know. Um, uh, we believe European Union's reputation is the combination of how such sort of differences and challenges are managed. Um, our target audiences for these communication strategies as writers, journalists, or sociologists, or uh, politicians, or bureaucrats, you know, the, uh, our communication strategies and our target audiences are ambassadors, government officials, diplomats, civil society organizations, reporters, editors, news directors, and executives from um, business and nonprofit organizations. This is a multi-channel communication, and this is essential in our digital age, as you know. Uh, internet traffic has changed our society, our institutions, our culture. Um, and in, the, in a decade, um, I often like to have some speculations about the future, uh, we will have some new faces in politics. In Turkey, I guess so, uh, and in the Middle East, and in Europe as well, because the young generation has great dynamism and uh, they can use internet technologies in this global digital age, but uh, we have to ha give them more chance and opportunities to be on the political stage uh, in an international level, of course, you know. Uh, if we, uh, as Turkish people and Europeans, convey the right messages to the right audiences, 
including print, broadcast, online communication, then we, um, we help uh, this communication uh, process, as you know. But Turkey should handpick the best practitioners, uh, practitioners in democracy, academia, and media. And I also would like to just briefly uh, mention about the uh, um, prisons, uh, the presentation, um, the image of Islam. How do foreign media present Turkish imagery and Islam in Turkey in the context of Turkey's European Union candidature? How does Turkey's imagery and Islam roles are perceived in the European Union? These are just questions food for thought for uh, sort of brief discussions, you know. And I would like to know if, what do you think about the, uh, do foreign media avoid discriminatory references to religious beliefs and avoid religious stereotyping in the region? Um, I think this denotes particular attention. How is Turkey pictured? Portrayal of Muslim Turkey, portrayal of secular Turkey, and the foreign press coverage of women in Turkey, I think these uh, will position our findings within this debate. Um, I think the negative images of Neve's coverage uh, were unfortunately presented during the 2000s. And um, a perceived trend of rising Islamophobia and its consequences in Europe, and uh, especially sometimes in US mass media. But this uh, is because of the misinformation of some sort of journalists and writers who write uh, in different uh, channels uh, in the media. Um, because they do not, uh, some journalists, some writers, they do not know the region. They do not know the religion, the institutions, the social structures. Uh, they don't have enough sufficient cultural backgrounds uh, within uh, their regions, so we should educate them. We should have some sort of education programs for them, uh, more television programs. I also communicated with uh, one of the uh, um, gentlemen from the uh, Ministry of European uh, Affairs in Turkey, and I think um, his name was Brock Erdener, and he has uh, suggested some other options for the uh, uh, media, uh, they prepared a report about the European Union and Turkish communication strategies. Uh, we should give priority to invited media professionals from European Union countries, you know, strengthen EU, EU orientation of the direct rate. We should have communication with different televisions and radio stations. Um, uh, we should also benefit from the European Commission's media programs. Um, and, uh, of course, we should have some timely responses to negative broadcasting about Turkey in the European Union, but this is really very fast-paced life, and we sometimes cannot capture every uh, minute details, as you, as you know. But this is image study, you know. Uh, psychology uh, is, uh, is also a very important element in analyzing these communication strategies between European Union and Turkey. Um, I uh, just briefly, I would like to say, uh, as I mentioned before, different political reporting, different political orientations cause different reporting. Uh, so it is very significant, I have to emphasize once more, that an educated awareness within the media on issues related to religion or belief uh, is essential, you know. And um, Turkey's profile around the world uh, international public opinion is inevitab uh, inevitably shaped by media coverage, uh, so we should have really very, um, a very rational, logical, um, efficient communication strategy. And um, I would like to say just very uh, shortly, um, within the European mosaic, European debates reflect different actions across the European, you, you, you see, Media companies, journalists should add the real face of Turkish policy with their frequently voiced arguments. Uh, Brussels uh, might have sometimes some image problem, so we have to uh, find a solution for these problems. Um, comments in the media have to be balanced and include pluralistic views. The foreign media coverage of Turkey is sometimes, uh, as we see, as we observe, is biased. We hear uh, and read controversial issues with regard to Turkey's accession uh, because it is unaddressed issues remain 
sometimes very limited communication strategy by Turkish authorities, uh, misunderstandings are unspoken, uh, prejudices fill the void, you know, uninformed public. Okay, the politicians, bureaucrats, diplomats, we are informed, writers, journalists, we are informed, we know social structures, but the public in Europe, I mean the populations, the demographic structure, I mean, they have to be more educated, we have to have more television programs about these uh, societies, and um, I, I think a new moment in Europe is needed, which is, I think, uh, which we will need in the next decade, uh, in the following years, uh, with um, um, with these issues in mind, uh, new social movements in the world uh, we can uh, witness. Um, we should present strategy leading to tension reduction, and we need more consensus building mechanisms. A uh, common understanding has to be developed among plenty of voices in the European Union, but uh, the most significant issue is the understanding of the historical fate of collective sentiments, uh, which is very significant. Well, we have public diplomacy, cultural diplomacy, opinion formation, and psychological strategies to do that. This all uh, needs action, real action, words plus action, as you know. Well, we as Turkish people, we consider ourselves European, Middle Eastern, Eastern, Asian. So this plurality is, a, is an asset, you see. And we hope that the positive communication processes develop further. And um, I think uh, we have to have a multidimensional approach. And I also have another suggestion uh, about the communication strategy. Uh, a new television project between Turkey and European Union communities, European Union countries, uh, this could be a television interactive program entitled as Kaleidoscope of Minds, uh, Turkey and European Union, uh, the flow of information. In each episode, we can try to bring different perspectives of people uh, so that uh, from European countries and Turkey, we can conduct mega negotiations in video teleconference systems. But we should not judge too quickly um, to communicate effectively, uh, we should have a coherent strategy. Um, they say I have just a few minutes left, so I will just leave by reading one of my European poems, if you don't mind. Uh, my poem, one of my poems, because I'm a pacifist. I don't like wars, conflicts, you see. So this is, uh, war is so sour. I've been waiting so long on these stained wet payments. You have been whispering this blue song. We don't want to hear all these lemons. No stretch faces, no broken hearts. War is so sour for all these cases, ringing bells, singing poor yells, crowd of anger and hate. Is this our endless fate? Murmuring the hymns that ring slowly, angels are late for all these capricious sins, people, we people, we sadly tear the paper of our fate, hear the unreachable truth. Why are the doors locked for peace? Thank you for your patience. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much for this lecture. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Make another tour. So. Uh, Konrad Kierczyński from Poland. Mm, thank you for the very interesting presentation. Um, I do agree that proper communication uh, and goodwill are critical to fight certain prejudice, certain bias, certain stereotypes. That goes without saying. I would like to refer to the very title, EU and Turkish Communication Strategies. Um, my first thought was that uh, whether we like it or not, uh, the EU, uh, well, it's hard to see it as a monolithic entity and certain particular interests 
uh, remain among various countries. And this also concerns such things as EU enlargement. For example, uh, Poland's view on the EU enlargement may differ from that of France, also in, w with respect to Turkey. So my point was, um, and these issues, this, this seeming um, reluctance to, 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 to enlargement may follow from uh, various political or economic reasons, not necessarily for the ignorance of journalists or, or certain biases. So my question is, uh, how do you see these uh, differences among p in particular EU states and how would you like to cope with this uh, issue? Thank you. Absolutely right. Uh, Europe is not one single voice. It's a multiplicity of voices. So um, that's the reason why we have been having some problems, but that happens. I mean, uh, diversity brings richness, but um, Turkey has a, a great position uh, in the future with uh, its young and dynamic population, the young generation. In the next decade, we will have more uh, educated, trained uh, techno technocrats, digital age giants, you know, the young generation, so uh, I agree with you. Each country has a specific uh, case and history. Um, but uh, I think uh, Turkey will, in the end, fit to this European mosaic. Uh, because Turkish population has, uh, some families have, uh, coming from the Ottoman times, we have European origins. We have, we have combinations, mixtures, you know. Uh, so uh, I think it's a multiplicity of voices, diversity. That's a student of political science from Münster University in Germany. And I have a qu question and I generally um, share your, or at least parts of your idealism concerning this relation between EU and Turkish, uh, Turkish Re Republic, but I w would like to ask you, as maybe Advat Advocatus Diaboli, um, how could this communication strategy be formulated or articulated, uh, if not by governmental institutions, but of mass media or civil ins institutions, in a coherent framework, and may not these, um, these approaches be prone to um, somewhat tendencies where the, maybe the results of the uh, debate maybe also uh, be um, you know, known before the actual discussion, which has maybe the implications of uh, the, um, the joining uh, of Turkey to the EU. And I would like to, ha uh, to hear your thoughts on that. And thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, you mean the image problem? I beg your pardon, can you repeat? Just uh, in a very brief. I just want to ask you a, a general question on the objectivity of this uh, communication strategy, also concerning press freedom, freedom of press, and uh, okay. intersubjectivity and objectivism uh, relations, and also the compat compatibility of uh, this approach to, you know, mass media rationales which want to sell maybe headlines and then. At this. I don't really share this kind of approach, but just ask you as this advocatus diaboli. Sorry. Thank you very much for this question because I think uh, I just forgot a very significant issue. Uh, in the next decade, the, one of the challenges, big challenges, uh, will be about uh, freedom of expression, I guess, but not only in the Middle East region, in the whole Europe, European continent as well. Uh, more uh, legal mechanisms uh, will be uh, implemented uh, within certain jurisdiction, you know. I think uh, freedom of expression, uh, very, very significant issue for not only for writers, for every uh, speaker, you know. Thank you.